All right, good morning. Go ahead and uh, we'll get started. John, what are your plans for Josh on Saturday and the rest of the starters as far as playing time goes? Yeah, Josh will not play uh, and a number of the starters will not play. Um, some starters will play, so it's more individually based at that point. Um, but I'd say the large portion of the core of our guys that have been here for um, a few years will not play. Any update on Stefan's status right now? Yeah, he will not play in the game. Uh, we hope to get him back here in a more active role on the field, at least uh, in the next couple of days to next week. Any plans to play Josh at all this preseason, or is that something you're still working on? Yeah, Joe, we're going to continue to take it one week at a time uh, because of the, uh, you know, newness of the the way the preseason's kind of been shaped here. We're going to just continue to evaluate it one week at a time. Um, so we'll see what next week brings. Have you planned this? How much have you been able to plan out? Obviously, you have injuries and things like that in terms of the going from four to three games, what you have, and the fact that a lot of guys are back. Maybe they don't need these games as much. How were you able to advance plan versus, as you say, kind of winging it a little bit? Yeah, I think both. It's a combination. Um, we do plan, as you know, Tim. and <clears throat> But at the same time, you always want to keep a, a watchful eye on the pulse, the vibe of the team, where those guys are how we've been practicing, the health of the overall team, uh, health by position. So all those things factor into it where you sometimes you just have to make in-course adjustments, if you will. So um, that's why I want to continue to take it one week at a time. We've seen uh, Luke Keekley out of practice a couple of days. Um, how did that come about? And watching it happen and talking to the coaches and the players, what's it been like? Yeah, it's, it was phenomenal to have Luke here. Um, you know, he's very close with quite a few of our players as well as our staff um, from his time in Carolina, obviously. So uh, just tremendous amount of respect for Luke. And uh, not only on the field, obviously people see that, but off the field in particular and who he is as a person, the way he carries himself. And and so uh, he was a great uh, addition to to us and our environment the last few days. Do uh, you want to coach at all in the future? Or yeah, that's, I'm not going to get into all that. Um, he'd be He'd be a great coach. We heard Dion be pretty honest about his experience with COVID, and it got pretty scary there for a moment. Um, how aware were you of how, how deep things got for him, and what do you hope his experience maybe teaches or, or does for the rest of your team? Yeah, um, you know, it's a very it was, it was a very real situation, right? And just because he's a professional athlete, um, that doesn't mean that you can't catch COVID, right? And, and, and have it as bad as he had it with the symptoms that he had. So um, I was very aware of the situation. Our training staff and, and, and doctors did a great job of keeping me in the loop. <clears throat> um, never want to see anyone go through that, um, especially to that extent. So it's very real. Um, Dion, as I know, he documented it, I believe it was yesterday or the day before. Um, so, I mean, I think it's just, we just get these constant little nudges of reminders of how how real this thing is and and uh, just to continue to, to follow all the protocols. From a football only perspective, you mentioned that he had a long road back. Um, I think that was about a week ago. How, how much progress has he made in a week and uh, what are the plans for him in terms of playing in, a, in this game or uh, the next preseason game? Yeah, he, he has made uh, significant progress. Uh, he's had a great attitude since coming back. I think he missed it, right? I think uh, I saw where he said he was, you know, obviously in the hospital and we were out here practicing. And so um, to hear him say that, I think, really speaks to how much he loves being out here with his teammates. Um, so he's he's made great strides. Um, he will play in the game. Uh, how much remains to be seen? Sean, you said no, Josh, but is Mitch going to be the starter? Could you tell us that? Uh, I'm Mitch Trubisky? Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, yeah, Mitch will be the starter. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, kind of lesson was learned regarding Dion that you could apply to if this were to happen in the regular season in terms of any any player. If we get into this situation, this is what we want to do. In terms of COVID uh, in general? How you're going to, yeah, how to handle, uh, just to get through it. It's a teaching moment yeah. for when the games are actually being played. Well, I mean, we went through 
on the surface of it, you know, having situations where COVID did come up around our team last year, I think we learned a lot how to handle it um, as a team. And I think the best thing we learned really was was to communicate um, with everyone. Um, so everyone knows what is going on on our team and then how it may or may not affect them. And, um, you know, who was around the, the person who was infected. So all of that, I mean, these guys, sometimes people forget they're human and they want to know whether they're safe. And, you know, we've tried to make it, we try to emphasize it um, the best we can that um, that's our number one goal is health and safety of our, of our players and our staff. For the extent of the work, Coach, that you know, a lot of guys on the back half of the roster got last week, what is the next thing that they need to show you here in game two? What's the next step for a lot of those guys? Yeah, I just think generally speaking, it's continue to improve. Um, you know, we were did some good things in the first game, um, but there's a lot of work yet to be done, and there's a lot of improvement yet to be had. So uh, we want to see those guys that are were first-year players that got their first taste last week take another step this week. And and so that's the natural progression, or should be the natural progression. Um, you know, then we've got some other players that have been around a little bit or been through the league a little bit, and, and just, again, trying to find out who they are and how they can help our football team. Mitch, uh, I think he only threw a couple of times last week. Maybe that was just part of the plan. But will, will is getting him a little bit more work um, an, an emphasis for this game, or is that you know remain to be seen? I guess. Yeah, it remains to be seen. I think we again we just want to continue to grow overall. Jay and um, Mitch, obviously, you know, new to our system, so I think he's off to a really good start. And uh, obviously, overall as an offense, we want to continue to grow too. How about uh, Zach Moss? Will he play on Saturday? He will, yes. So what are you looking for to see from him after, you know, missing so much time here? Yeah, um, it's uh, – and, and, again, that's where it gets. I think Tim was one I asked earlier about taking it one week at a time and just trying to – there's so many – within that running back position, we've got some injuries. So, you know, it's how much can – do we want how much of a load do we want to put on each guy? Zach, in this case, just coming back off the injury. So, you know, I listen to our trainers and um, they feel like he's in a good good enough spot. He's had a good couple of days here. Um, so we'll just see how much um, how many reps we want to give him. And again, the flow of the game sometimes dictates that. So there's been a lot of talk, especially last week, about the emphasis on taunting. How, what, how do you, if you can, approach the message to your team about? The emotion's got to be there, but we have to be careful how we do that with how they're doing this. Yeah, we just obviously, we, obviously, we just honestly talked about that this morning in our team meeting. Um, try and learn from other people's mistakes, uh, if you will, around the league and seeing how it's gonna, going to be officiated and, in, in this case, taunting. Um, it's been a point of emphasis for the for the referees, and and it showed up in week one. I think there were two calls uh, um, in preseason, so it is something that we have to. Uh, educate our team on and, and be ready to adjust to. Sean, what have you made of uh, a guy who was undrafted last year, Josh Thomas, and his trajectory of where he was when you first got him without the true offseason to where he is now? Yeah, um, you know, much like a couple of the other guys we have, and Cody and Zach, who really spent a lot of time this offseason inside this building in our training room, um, tremendous resiliency is what he's shown. Uh, very passionate and serious about about his job and um, thought he had a good game in week one against Detroit. And so another young guy that we're going to look to see uh, and watch this week here. Thanks, guys. Guys, good? Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.